Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I know it has been a while since I posted my last video. I was only supposed to be taking a break for a week and I ended up taking like over a week and a half, I think, off. Um, if you guys haven't been following me on Instagram or you're new to this channel, I just got legally married. Um, it was awesome. It was just kind of our like paperwork and like a mini ceremony with just um, my husband and I's parents. And we went to dinner and it was fabulous. And then we went on like a little mini moon up to Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and it was great. And I went to one of my favorite places in Providence, Rhode Island, which is uh, the Lovecraft Store. Uh, I believe the official title is the Lovecraft Arts and Sciences. It's in the arcade down in like the uh, downtown financial district of Providence. It's super cool. It's a like really awesome kind of. Um, horror meets cosmic horror Lovecraftian style bookstore and they have like art as well really cute really tiny um but I really really love it and I always try and pick something up when I am there and that is actually what uh inspired this video because my husband when we were perusing the books was like oh that's what Hellraiser is based off of and pointed this out to me and I was like you know what I've never ever read Clive Barker which is a shame since this is a horror channel. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna read it. And I did, I read it, I read it on our train ride home. Um, but yeah, so I didn't post any videos because I was on my mini mood. And then when I came back, um, my dog had a little um, medical issue and we had to take him to the vet and it was like three days of like just taking him in and getting him tested. And uh, right now he seems fine. All of the tests are coming back okay. Um, it seems like he might have just hurt himself playing in the dog park and it looked like it could have been something else. Um, so fingers crossed that he is good, but yes. And finally, sorry, before I dive into this video, um, I've never done one of these before, but I do have a Pango Book store and I've j done a sale. Um, everything right now is 10% off. It's kind of like a Labor Day sale that I'm doing. Pretty much to try to clear the inventory that I have there. So I can start adding some new books. So if you guys are interested, take a look at my Pango books. My link is down below. And I'm selling books for anywhere between like, I think seven to $13. Usually they're about $7, some are nine, and they're all gonna be 10% off, so there you go. Anyway, let's talk about this. So I didn't really wanna do a actual like review of The Hellbound Heart because this book has been around for so long. I kinda feel like this would be me doing a review of Stephen King's The Shining. If you're into horror, you've probably read it. If you're into horror, you definitely have your opinions. But I really wanted to talk about just what I thought of reading Clive Barker for the first time. Um, and I have seen Pinhead. Um, I have seen Hellraiser. I've seen the Pinhead films. Um, so I really wanted to chat about kind of the comparison between the novel as well as the actual icon that is Pinhead. Um, so for those of you guys who have not heard of this book, I'm going to read the, the back. So it says, Frank Cotton's insatiable appetite for the dark pleasures of pain led him to the puzzle of Le Marchand's box, and from there to a death only a sick-minded soul could invent. But his brother's loved, crazed wife, Julia, has discovered a way to bring Frank back, though the price will be bloody and terrible, and there certainly will be hell to pay. So I'm gonna go and just start right off the bat. I really did enjoy this book. I read it in, I think, a day and a half. Um, I read it primarily on the train back from Providence and then I finished it the next day. Um, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. And what I liked a lot about this book is you really got a look at the our main characters, that being Frank and Julia. And in the films, I feel like everybody's kind of a crappy person. But in the book, I think it's like tenfold crappy people. And the book is really more a horror story on character um, and betrayal and love and loyalty and a family dynamic and a story about cheating and the cheating spouse and the unfaithful familial ties between brothers. And I think while that is very, very present in the film, it is way more highlighted in the book. And for me, that has to do with the characterization of Julia. I found, I mean, I didn't like her in the movies, but she's an interesting character to watch in the movie. Um, and she, she's got this, this, 
this, I don't want to say arrogance about her in the film, but she kind of carries herself with this pride that I don't feel is present in the novel. She's definitely a much weaker character in the novel, and I have to say I don't buy her relationship with Frank in the novel the way that I do in the film. Um, and I can critique this because Clive Parker wrote both the film and the novel, so we've got that going for us. Um, but Clive Parker, I've always heard that he was very, like, I've always heard that he's a literary author. And reading this, I absolutely see this. And with this, I see a beautiful and eloquent prose. But it was way more readable than I was expecting it to be. I feel like I've always kind of strayed away from reading like books of blood. One, because they're short story collections. But two, because there's this kind of air about some of these older authors either being super pulpy or super literary. And I feel like when you have somebody like Stephen King who really is right there in the dead center where he can write a kind of pulpy story but use the extremely um, compelling language that it really just nails some of those older authors. Like, that is exactly what I want from like a mid 80s true horror novel. And I was really, really like happy to see that Clive Barker writes that way as well. Um, I know that he's a little slightly after the beginning of Stephen King's uh, career. He was like a more of a mid 80s author and onwards. Um, but I love this. I was and I know that this is true in the film as well. The Cenobites really aren't as prominent as I, as they are in in the movies um, and just overall in the film. Like they're not very. There's not a lot of screen time on them. It's like Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. Um, and it's interesting because I feel like Pinhead as a character is so captivating in that film, and all of them are so strikingly beautiful that it kind of makes them less scary in this book because their descriptions feel far more vague. Their purpose feels far more vague. And one of the biggest things that I noticed in this novel is that in the movie, when Frank kind of goes on this pleasure hunt with solving the box, he kind of does find pleasure in the torture overcoming him at times. Um, in this novel, it really is just a story I feel of deceit um, and there isn't a purpose to it and that kind of lends itself to that cosmic horror or this existential dread where you don't understand where we're too small to understand and I feel like that was kind of a misstep for me this idea of the Cenobites being these deceitful creatures versus in the film where the Cenobites seem to be very much honest creatures but understand but with the understanding that humans can't comprehend what they comprehend. And I feel like that miscommunication between the two works so much better in the film than it did in this novel. And it's actually quite hard for me to find uh, like true differences between the, the film and the book because they really, really are very, very similar. Um, which is something that always like kills a book for me if I really already like the film. I know that happened to me with Silence of the Lambs. I've seen that movie a ton. Um, I really, really love that film. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And then the book is basically exactly like the film. So that ended up getting a four star read from me because I was just reading a story I already knew. And that's kind of how I felt here, except it appears that like, what's her name? Christy? Kirsty? Kirsty. Yeah, except for in this one, I feel like Kirsty, in, in the film, I believe is the daughter of Rory and Julia and that makes far more sense than who Kirsty is in this because at first I was like oh is she Rory's assistant is she like an ex-girlfriend who's become a friend is she a neighbor who is she like the book does not explain who Kirsty is and the fact that she becomes such a major player in the latter half of this book like blew my mind because I'm just sitting here inferring all of these weird things about Kirsty who is really just like the nosy neighbor poking her nose into things because she wants to sleep with a, a woman's husband. Um, and then it's like all judgy judgy when she thinks that there's infidelity in the marriage on the other side. Like, she was an interesting character. Um, but I did understand the point of it all. I, and I don't really want to put spoilers in here, but I loved the scene at the end with the wedding dress. Um, I don't really understand what happened exactly and I'm not going to sit here and pretend to understand cosmic horror because it isn't something that I do 
understand. <laughs> cosmic horror is like my least favorite genre of horror and I just read um, a whole cosmic horror world book. So I am on a cosmic horror adventure this month it would seem. Um, but the scene with the wedding dress was so horrifying and beautifully like described. Like I could just see like this gothic silhouette of this like headless bride and I thought that was phenomenal. Like the way Clive Barker wrote certain descriptions, um, I just, I really, really loved his writing. I definitely want to check out Books of Blood. So if you guys have any suggestions for me and what I should read from Clive Barker next, let me know. I know he gets into kind of like fantasy territory and I know King does too, but I'm not a fantasy girl. It, it takes a lot for me to really get into a fantasy book fantasy movie totally different I can watch Lord of the Rings all day but I've tried so hard to read the Fellowship of the Ring and I just cannot get through it um so yeah give me some horror recommendations on Clive Barker I am so happy that I finally jumped on this ship because he is absolutely worth the read and if you haven't given him a chance definitely pick up Hellbound Heart it's super short it's like 150 pages um with like giant font um and you can read it super fast it's very eloquent it's very like small town horror um with this like just elevated concept and the cosmic horror in it didn't crush me the way that a lot of cosmic horror does so it's definitely a fan of that four stars and really the only reason that it hit the four stars is just because there wasn't anything that the movie hasn't really offered me i will say that i think the movie might be better than the film solely because the visuals in the film and some of the more iconic lines like Jesus wept um really elevate this story and again it's really just Clive Barker giving his script a visual um so obviously it's going to really elevate it and having the director and writer also be the original author is definitely a bonus so you know you're going to get exactly what Clive Barker's vision was but yeah I did really really enjoy this highly highly recommend it we'll definitely be reading more Clive Barker in the future and Go Pinhead. He's awesome. He's super scary. If you guys haven't seen, I think it's called like Masters of Horror on Shudder. They do a whole breakdown of like seven of the most iconic characters in like slasher franchises and they do one on Pinhead and it is just fantastic. Um, and they compare the visuals of Pinhead and the other Cenobites to their descriptions in the book and how they came up with the designs that they have today. And I thought it was just absolutely fantastic. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I try to post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. For the next month, I should be back to my normal schedule. Um, if you enjoyed these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button down below, and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye.